Welcome back to the channel and to a new series called Good to Great in which we take courses from designers who are typically on that tour worthy level. I think we've got enough out there for guys who are not approved to approved or looking to go from approved to tour worthy, but are looking to take that next step, whether it be going further in contests or simply just continuing to develop. Um, I get a lot of these requests from people, could you play my course and give me your thoughts? That's understandable when you do tutorials. And I think there's enough from this type of level that I think we could really use in terms of pushing people a little bit further. The second reason I wanted to do it was, well, I got a lot of this when I was starting out. I got a lot of feedback from experienced guys, whether it be playthroughs from Reeb, Mayday, Pithy, Andre, Matt, um, or thoughts from guys like Jiza, Petty, who'd been doing it a little longer than I had. And that, I think, really helped me to develop. So I want to do a little bit more of that. Yeah, just a few disclaimers. So Graham reached out as, and I'll ask a few people to post things on Twitter and see whether they're called, post something on Twitter to see if anyone else wants. Uh, but I won't go searching for courses. This is very much a volunteer thing. Firstly, um, a lot of stuff might come off as my opinion, I will always try to justify that and say why I think what I think based on those kind of architectural principles. Um, however, there's an element of this where some feedback you will just disagree with. That's normal. Um, what I would encourage designers to do when they see this is try to understand why someone is saying this and work out whether it's just a actually you're just not seeing my vision or was my vision just bad or necessarily not necessarily well founded. Um, sometimes it will just be the case of, yep, yeah, you didn't like that and I did like that, so I'm just going to stick with it. That's absolutely fine. We need that. But try to understand what people might not like, because odds are if I'm saying it with a lot of experience, there'll be other guys who maybe think the same thing. But there are definitely times when I will be wrong and I will go back to courses and replay them later and go, eh, you know what, on second play, that works. I do remember this course being released near the end of 21 and it wasn't I don't think it was quite finished and Graham's clearly replanted it. He's done some stuff to the plot. There's more water involved than there was. I don't think there was any, if I remember rightly, on the previous version. Um, and the lighting's definitely lower. And I think there's some more planting and probably some more bunkers. But I do remember the sand belty sort of style. Obviously, well positioned to comment on that. Um, and I do remember the use of the roads and the fences. Obviously, we've got new splined fences, so we're going to be using those. Um, it's about how we use them. And I remember there being lots I enjoyed and a few things that definitely I'd take away, but we'll refresh our memory. The final disclaimer, I have not played 23 in quite a while, so prepare yourself for some bad tempo, which is good because we need to see how courses play when people play them badly. So hopefully we'll get some bad shots in there as well. Right, so let's leap over to the first tee, which I think is somewhere around here. Got a cool little sinuous routing by the looks of things. There we are. And we'll leap back to the first tee and then off we go. So first hole, um, you can see straight away we've got the out of bounds up here. I'm glad that we're not really encouraging people to play close to it on the first hole, because I think that can be very penal. Um, and it's quite a harsh way to start your round, asking someone to challenge out of bounds. Like, might be what you're going for with the philosophy of the course, but given that there's such wide corridors, going right up against out of bounds is going to be tricky when you're allowing for 70, 80 yards wide fairways. Now, I will say that we're going straight over a bunker and the obvious play is just to smash driver this way, which this bunker is saving us from out of bounds, which I kind of like, actually. I think you don't really want people blowing it out of bounds unless they hit a really bad shot on the first. But why would I ever not hit anything less than driver? The other thing is, if I've got a short driver, say the 265 ones, or like that's what my abilities allow me to hit, and I'm into the wind, well, I'm now playing out here and I've got a long, it, it just feels like I've maybe move this bunker up a touch or lose, nah, probably not lose this one. It's, I guess it's a very friendly opening hole. More the question is though, how these two bunkers work together. If I can't carry this bunker, then this one comes into play and it forces me even further right. And maybe that's a touch penal. But as it is, Looks like it's just a nice friendly tee shot, but hopefully that's just about going to squeeze through. I think we'll get a nice bounce and we should find fairway just about. Cool. I do like the green side of the base of the trees. I think that works nicely. And the bunkers are big. Um, the green is very big. 
and I think you could probably use a little bit more bold sloping to justify the amount of green space you've got. Um, because the bold sloping are running you into bunkers and therefore making the bunkers play larger than they do, which does mean you need a larger green surface. So these ones work. It just feels like there's a lot of gentle, which is also partly what I'm preaching at the moment, because I think we need that. I'd be a bit wary of how this slope plays and whether it actually works as a backstop, but we can check that. Um, one thing I will say in terms of technical stuff, having done sand belt courses quite a lot, you would want to lose the fringe because that's just going to prevent the ball from rolling into the bunkers and you don't really need it. You, yes, you might want it on other holes, but just for this look, you want to get rid of it. Um, otherwise, we've got a choice. I mean, for this pin, I probably have wanted to be further to the right, but that's okay. We're fine where we are. 165, I want to be below the hole if I can, so here is fine as long as we... And the tricky thing with the cloudy lighting is it has gone very dark. And if I remember rightly, a lot of this grass was the same grass used in the previous game. And because of the lighting change, the grass now looks very, very dark in spots. So I'd say this is probably the low end of lighting that I would go for. Uphill part. 30 on the first hole. Admittedly, I did play around previously and settings were all spiking everywhere. We were getting rubbish frame rate. I made a bogey on the first hole, the first time I played. So there we are. Um, second hole, I've got a bit... I, the first hole's a solid opener. Second hole, I've got a bit more to crit critique. Um, firstly, I think we're lacking some planting on this underbrush. It's very noticeable that we've got loads of grass here and just nothing. Even if it's just a couple of bushes or spots, you don't need to plant all of it with grass. I think that would, especially as that's framing... On this right hand side i think we'd want a little bit more below there um or we want it a bit more empty on this side it's just very all here and nothing um in terms of this hole again i like the bunkers the big bunkers framing it are really good um and again we've got those bunkers kind of protecting our out of bounds which makes some good sense um we have large surfaces in this case i'm like the style of course this is i'm not averse to this big apron short you might think there's no point to it, but actually it's pretty trip, And there isn't really, no one's laying up here, but it's a pretty traditional feature of these sorts of courses. I do like that you've pulled this bunker a little further away from the green, it gives that kind of deceptive view. I think if I were doing that, I'd probably lower this piece of land. So the bunker is like the top thing that you see rather than just seeing that little mound behind it. Um, because it makes you think that the pin is closer to the bunker than it actually is, which is cool. Um, it then also means that we're encouraging people to bounce it on. The other reason I think I'd flatten that out is because you're likely not to get a bounce off a downslope that then kicks people way through, particularly as this pin, I think we've got the green slowing balls down up to here, but then the moment you get past it, you're in the bunker, which I think is a touch penal, um, particularly with how the greens in the new game play. I'd be raising this up so that you've got a flattened portion. We don't we we don't want to penalise those slight misses where you just go past the pin. Allow a few feet of leeway, and then it will also mean if you do go, you're definitely going into the bunker because this will be higher and therefore the runoff will be steeper. Um, that said, I think the hole works nicely. Same yeah, same comment on the fringe here. I think we can make this a little neater into the bunker. Just raising the bunker a little higher will mean that you're not running people off the green and into the bunker which i don't think is quite how we to play it now slightly into the wind definitely don't want to go long i think just a tiny bit off a six iron oh just the other thing seeing from the tee this is probably one where because you planted it later it's come up i would really like to see more of this bunker just lower this land a bit same here like lower this land and just let's see a bit more of your your surfaces mm. Uh, slow might help. So that should be good because I think it's going to slow up on that upslope. Yeah, pretty significantly. Could have been a bit more bold, but works well. Yeah, now that we can see the grass in the light, I think I'd like a bit more variety in the colouring. would just make it pop 
a little more. It's very grey and muted, and then when the lighting mutes, it will mute even further. Right, that's the sort of thing where I think grass work can add so much to your course, different colours and things like that. It's not necessarily saying have it brighter, but like mix maybe two grasses and it just adds a little bit more of a uh, colour palette, I guess. See, here we've got more of that underbrush and that frames it really nicely. It's not grabbing your eye with empty space. Um, right, I do remember this hole. So we have curved out of bounds down the right, which functions effectively as a hazard it's like how much as much as you can chew however i think it feels a little bit gimmicky because there's no real reason why it might be out of bounds there's just dead land here and the fence i get it's a perimeter i think perimeter fences and out of bounds as a hazard works really well as a straight line it's very tough to make it work as a curved line and i mean this does have some road hole elements to it as a par four, quite a long par four, I think. Oh, well, four, six, nine. Okay. So if we're, one of the questions in my mind is always, if I'm not taking on this challenge, then what? So I, that's the tee shot you're daring me to play, but you've got to give me a bailout option. So if I go too far left, I'm in this bunker. Okay. So we might take a bit off, but that still brings that bunker into play. Okay. So we might drive three wood. Well, that's still pretty narrow. Because this bunker, I think I would have lost this bunker completely. Because then you're saying to people, you can hit three wood, you've just got a longer approach. And bear in mind, if people are hitting three wood and playing away from the OB, they've got no angle at this pin. Like That's a really tough shot. And if I am playing three wood, let's say it's going to go 270, maybe into wind. I've got 220 into this pin. Like, I think that's one of the areas I, I would focus on of just like, if... I'm not taking on this challenge, what do I do? Because I kind of feel like I'm forced into hitting this or I'm playing a very long second. I really feel comfortable with the out of bounds there and the bunker there because I don't back myself on hitting tempo, but we'll give it a go. As I say, more because I feel like I've got no other choice and we don't hit tempo and we hit that bunker that we disliked off the tee. Because now I've got 200, I'm blind, and that's something where I think I will, that's a kind of typical one for this series. I think I tend to see quite a lot of just like that. We've put a bunker in and we haven't really necessarily thought about what if not. We'll try and hit a five wood out of the bunker and just get it somewhere close. As is, we are going to bump into this bunker, I'd suspect. But again, I really like the green site. And I think it's just that one change that would make this hole so much better. It's often worth thinking about whether you need a bunker and whether removing the bunker would make it a better hole. Because actually looking back at it, the land movement's really cool on this. I think I'd probably put something to make it, like dense trees would make this much clearer as to why it's out of bounds. It's just the emptiness that's like throwing me a little bit. Um, yeah, I think that one change would be all, all I'd need. Otherwise, this green, I think it kind of gathers. Definitely got the toughest of the pins. That back little runoff is treacherous. I think it's a tough but fair par four if you lose that bunker. With that bunker, it feels a little bit video gamey in that it's just here's the shot, hit it. Still, we'll try and make an up and down. And I hit an awful shot off that foot, that tee. I'm not trying to hide that. Happy to get away with the par there. So yeah, committing to the boundary fence is one thing. I think it would be good to clear up why there's a boundary. Speaking of fences, I don't really understand why this one's here. Yeah, I get that we got the spline fence tool, but this one feels a little extra. Um, this is kind of the same with the first hole, but better in the sense of We've got this diagonal carry. I like this tee shot because I can take on this bunker as tight as I can. And the way that you've cut the fairway in here means that if I pull it too far left, I'm going off the fairway. Could question whether we need that bunker again. But I think this one, this one makes more sense as a far side bunker than the other ones on the previous hole. I sort out the kink in this fairway a little. 
Interesting, we've got water there. We'll come to that later. Um, I also really like this tee shot because it's a shorter hole and I feel like you can ramp up the pressure more than on that previous one. Here I am going to take three wood. And I think it should be pretty safe. Yeah, works well. Because I feel like laying back to a seven iron in is good. I'm okay with that. Got a decent angle. I am taking on this bunker, whereas I might have been able to get round it. But I think this is the best hole so far by some distance. Really like this. Just a simple, good golf hole done really well in terms of like the angles and like that diagonal bunker off the tee works really well. And I feel like I've been rewarded for like playing the sensible option. I haven't taken on too much danger and I've still got a makeable part, which we're going to miss, but shame. Yeah, a bit more variety in the grasses would help. Um, Just it's very one tone grass, which would lift it. And when you're using so much of the grass, I think, just burying it or clumping some bushes here or there would really help. And some background planting here might be useful as well, but that's, there's probably some meter issues, I might guess. Cool. Okay, next hole. Good look off the tee. I think the swale here on the tee box is a bit odd because it looks like this tee box is higher than here. And I suspect what, kind of like the, the second hole, what you need to do is just lower some of this land so that you can see everything you want. It would be really cool to be able to see the water from the tee. And I don't think, I don't think you need this bit of fairway. I think straightening this hole up, because nobody's playing out here. Yeah, this is all just like extraneous stuff. Like, lose this, make this beach, show off the water, drop the land. Like, I think that would make more sense for me. Because again, the and there's no... You can also push these bunkers further up. Just I know they're there for visual effects, but we don't need the fairway at 154, really. Um, and that would help them come into view a bit more. Still not a great swing, but we're managing. We would get more reward for challenging that bunker just on the left-hand side. Oh, it's quite significantly cambered. Did not realise that. Quite hard to tell that sort of stuff when you use the muted lighting. And the further we are this side, again, this is another good hole. Like the hole design's great in terms of what we're trying to do. So challenge this bunker. If you take it on, you get an ang well. Eh. There's a few things maybe fighting against each other in terms of where this bunker is actually. So if we take on this bunker, we don't necessarily get we get a better view of this side, but I think the green sloping is not really helping us because now I'm playing down the green and the ball's going to run away more if I'm coming from this side. Whereas if I play to the right-hand side of the fairway, which is away from that bunker and just down to this side, and I can use the camber to funnel my ball that way, well, then the slopes are kind of more gathering me towards pins rather than pushing me away. I think the green sloping I might look at on this hole. Everything else I like. I think that's the one thing I'd tweak. I do like the little cluster of bunkers and how it works into the beach. I think that's done nicely. Um, I do like this hole though. Well, we're playing for the fast and getting it, so that's something. That sits down now. That's quite nice. So yeah, from that side, the slope's kind of gathering. You probably have a short club in, so it doesn't matter as much, but... I think that green's just fighting what you're doing a touch. Um, similar thing with the false front. I think either we want it to go into the bunker or we don't. I'd probably move it just around the bunker, but I don't think you really want people running off the green from there into the bunker. I'd probably raise this up. Um, if you look at sandbelt greens, there's not that many that run into bunkers. Often it's like challenging the bunkers. I feel like I was rewarded on that hole, but I think with this hole, we've got kind of similar to what we had on the previous one where your front tee is blocking a little bit. So you can see what you want us to see versus what we actually see. Just lower this a touch. We do have another gratuitous fence. Um, 
I wonder whether your trees are just preventing the view of the water, but that's by the by. Um, on the green, I think at this point, yeah, we just want to be tucking these bunkers right up against. And that slight miss, I think you'll find a big difference between people's opinions of a course. If they feel like they're hitting the green but being rolled into the bunker, they will treat that a lot differently to if they miss tempo, miss the green, end up in a bunker. What you want to be doing, I think, with this course is tucking the bunkers tight up against, make the green flat on the edge so that you don't roll into the bunker, and it will feel less penal and less tricked up, would be the way I'd word it. Uh, otherwise, I don't mind this par 3, but it's not really... I don't think it's doing anything the previous par 3 didn't. And it can be tricky to... Oh, that's a push can be tricky to add too much variety to par 3s when they are one-shot holes. It's either location or you do something really interesting with the bunkering or the green. I think with the green as big as it is, we're just surrounding it by bunkers, which means, yeah, it's tough. But I think I'd be wanting something, whatever you're doing with this, I'd want something a bit more grabbing at this hole. Oh, that's probably a little... Oh, no. Did not expect that to miss low. Yeah, that's one where it's like it's it's a fine hole. There's nothing officially like uh, there's nothing explicitly wrong with it. I was saying it was really grabbing me. Okay, that sort of blind tee shot, big green. I think this is a green where we're never really going to get the angle. Well, we we there's no. You're also tempted to play here, really, aren't you, in this sort of a wind? Certainly downwind. You get a much shorter approach. And you take out the risk of bunkers. Yeah, I'm really not sure we need some of these fences. This is... This tee being here versus this fairway being here and the direct line to the hole being directly over the tee. That's a little awkward. And it's a routing issue I think we probably want to tweak. Um... Okay. Yeah, I think the risk you run with these big greens with not that many bold slopes are is they just they look giant landing zones, which will. I mean, one of the mess. One of the things Graham mentioned was that he wasn't sure whether people necessarily got the angle stuff. I think you're doing a lot of angle stuff, but it's kind of negated by the really big greens at points. Um. Yeah. Oh, we hit a bad tee shot. I didn't mind the tee shot, other than the line being where it was. And I'm okay with greenside bunker, I think, here. I think particularly for a par 5, if this is a par 4, I'd be okay, I guess, with the really big green, but... Also, this bunker is literally just cutting off the ground game approach. You can probably feed one on this side. But it's just there to cut off an approach and then there's a huge green beyond it. So we're saying purely aerial, which can work. But I think if I were doing a purely aerial par 5, I'd probably make the green a bit smaller. And yeah, I don't know. I think for a par 5, you want a smaller green that's a little less receptive rather, uh, rather than this, which is quite big. And I feel like had I hit the fairway, I'd have been fine. Easy to say with hindsight. Okay, right, we have some thoughts. <laughs> um, so this one's a short par 4, and understandably we're getting tighter. And I think this is going to be another one where it's a bit of a key feature for these types of courses that are like designers on that sort of threshold. We clearly defined like a layup zone, as in you can hit 5 iron, or 4 iron depending on the wind, to here and that's fine but that is close to the water still like it's not entirely without risk it's got bunkers on one side it's got water on the other side we've got a t here that's a little awkward again i think the routing's got some it we're, we're forcing some holes with the routing we've got um you're kind of just gonna go for it right because the water is your big issue like 
you definitely want to play away from this. And our layup zone is still sort of bringing that into play. We can't hit five wood, at least why would we hit five wood into this tiny choke point? Why would we hit three wood into this tiny choke point? Because we're going to run into a bunker. We might as well just hit this, and there's no reason not to end up in a bunker. I feel like drivable par fours are going to be a common feature on this sort of series where it's just like, well, often we protect against driving the green so much, and we, people will overthink those width and angles. Allow some more space. Encourage people to hit three wood. Don't encourage them to hit five iron. Like, give them a space to hit three wood. Give them a space to hit five wood. And I don't think this quite does it. Yeah, that's a bad swing. Ooh, no, it's better than I thought. Below the hole. Okay. Also, this this hole feels very cramped in a way that the others haven't done. I think one of the things I would probably be doing with this, lose this little mouth because i think you're you're protecting the neck of the green really well let's make all of this fairway that would encourage people to hit all the way down to here they get the angle the further up they get to the green and they can drive the green for ultimate benefit i don't think you need to choke it quite as much here I and mean, just allow a bit more space this side it just feels like we're protecting each option a little too much that you might as well go for it which is kind of similar to comments on a previous hole got a bit worried about that part Still good. All right, next hole. Also, this is the back tees as well. I assumed it was a front tee. And we've gone very dark. Um, long par four, so relatively stress-free tee shot. Again, we're really choking down three wood. Even though it's a stress-free tee shot, I think always try and give a lot more space if you're laying up. We don't need these. Oh, there's space to go over this way. There's nothing. I like the kind of skyline fairway that, oh, not skyline, but like high fairway. Oh, we nearly did make that bunker. So another green kind of at the base of a hill. We've had a few of those, and I don't think we... Green running front to back on a long par four is risky. I think it works with this one. It's encouraging ground game. Just be wary of overdoing that. Oh, that's an awful swing. Felt that one. We and we found the bunker that no one's expected to find. So. Hoping that grabs. There we go. And we've ended up below the hole. I think this one works. Because you've got that feeder slope that would take you down towards a pin here if you play well. You're encouraging people to hit to here. Yeah. This is a solid hole. Ten. So we start the back line. Did we make it back to the clubhouse on nine? Not really an issue if we didn't, but yeah, we kind of did. Good work. Okay. This front bunker feels a touch out of place. It's like it's only protecting a pin just here, which I don't think we need it for, really. Or you could expand the green a little bit further behind it. I kind of think the same thing about the greens. Like they could use just a little more something. I'm enjoying the subtle slopes. They play really well when you're on them, but it could use a few more of these little mounds just to help you move the ball towards pins because all of the red slopes we've had have been punitive with the exception of that last one on the previous hole, which would maybe bring you down towards the hole. Again, like driver, free rain, free wood, more pinched, like that bunkers more in play with three wood than it is with driver i'd argue watch me go and find that bunker but you get a better angle for going down the right particularly if the pins tucked on the left of the green this hole's almost there it's just again i think it's just that three wood layup zone like trying to work out what we are doing I don't love the pin position. It feels like we've got a better pin just about here that's still going to use this slope but not make it think us feel like that's a breaking crazily. And given that it's breaking down this way and down this way, yeah. 
Mm. That should be good, actually. Mm. Other than the Mega Slay. Even then, it's safe. Yeah, breaking hard at the hole is not normally fun. And if it is, it's like, is it part of a more a bigger slope, I guess? Ah. Oh. This is where we get the Ben Five part. Classic. Yeah. That one's almost there. I think it's just the tee shot a bit open. It's just finding that balance. I like that this is what we should have been doing a bit more with the previous tee shots where we've pushed our front tees outright so that we can lower this land a little bit more and give that better view. Uh, again, I'll question the extra fence, but I think we'll leave that for now. Um, there's a lot of bunkers between the, the tee and the green. It's very daunting. Don't mind that. I do kind of feel that the par, the par threes have been the weaker part of the course. I would say like this one, again, it's not, not really doing anything. The previous two haven't. And I like the bunkering around it and the angle of the green. It's just because the greens themselves are so relatively benign, other than these slopes taking into bunkers. That could be lifted a touch. Again, solid hole. But if we're looking to push into that great, that would be one thing I'd focus on. Like what can we give our par three in par threes in terms of playing characteristics? And then I guess the second thing is like that we've had a lot of these holes where driver is an obvious play and three wood is more pinched. Because if I play three wood, I'm now like what you you're punishing me in multiple ways. Or if I don't hit my driver as far, I guess is the other thing. We're not saying take driver out of people's hands. We're saying like and or don't give driver the advantage. By all means, do. It's just don't make driver necessarily a thoughtless play for the longest hitters. Because that's kind of taken loads of the hazards out of play, and it's basically becoming a a well can I pitch it? This green's got more interest. I I don't love this slope just running us off. I think if I were doing that, I'd make it again. I'd run off because you're just going to run just off the green and stop about here. You want to continue your run off further and make it a bit more profound and then bring a little bit more playable slope. I think you'll get more effectiveness from doing that. Mm -hmm. I might bit off a bit more. Oh no, we're okay. We're okay. The backdrop's cool. Um, and you could also be pushing your green a little bit closer to the water. Would be like because this green could be anywhere on the property. Like you've got the water, and we're using it as a nice backdrop. But I think we could possibly push it a little closer. Not necessarily right on top of it, but closer. The far side of the water looks a tiny bit empty. Yeah, and I think I'd want to just clean up this part of planting a tiny bit as well. I'm very dark again, which is a shame, I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. Same thing with this, the, uh, this drivable four, really. This one is like a... There's risk around and there are bunkers and that can cause people problems. But what's our layup? Water. Pushing us this way. Do we get much benefit? Well, we're still going to have to go over the bunkers. Laying back to here. An option. That is an option for sure. I think I'd want something in between. Like this bit of fairway and this bunker. Uh, it's because it's coming off this green. I think you could still do this. If you had your bunker like more side on allow more space on your direct line because it's pinching here in a way we don't really need i think i'm going to go through it again because i just don't really see a reason why not to not in the sense that but not in the sense that i don't see danger i do i just don't see that the layup is all that advantageous because mm. if i hit a bad tempo here 
I'm in the water. If I hit a bad tempo here, I'm in a bunker. I'll take bunker every time. It's kind of where we're placing our green and where we're placing our layout because even though it might look a mile off, I'm giving this a ton of respect, especially as the fairway kind of falls off here, which we probably want to flatten out. And if I'm just missing, I'm bouncing down. Right. Going for this kind of makes more sense. That's probably the best drive I've hit all day as well. But like, I'd want to be considering going for the green, like the most risky of the options by a considerable distance. And I don't think I did there. Um, green sloping. There's some slopes on here I don't, don't love. We've gone significantly uphill and then the high point is in front of the green rather than necessarily on the green. When the green's at the crown of the hill, you can kind of see how this bit of land is high and then it dips down a little bit. Just make, I'm not saying always work perfectly in harmony with the land, like you tweak it as you need to, but like if that's the tip of the hill here, generally everything should be sloping this way. And that'll then mean that I'm above the hole and I do have a slick putt. It could be more treacherous. Granted, the green speeds are nice and low on this. I haven't commented on that. But that's definitely helping playability. Right, that's just from that's where we were. Somewhere about here. Kind of coming over a little bit of a spine. Yeah. Yeah, short fours, par threes. Easy drive versus three wood pinching. Same kind of thing here, like the bunkers in three wood range rather than this driver's driver range, and it's par five. You also have this coastline. I would love for the green to be angled in such a way that I'm challenging the coast a little bit more. Whereas here, your angles from this side. You don't have to. I just think it would make a bit of variety, particularly when, um, if we consider the inland holes, you like this could be an inland hole. There's, we're not necessarily using the coast to its maximum. Mm. I do like this. I think the slopes on this green work a little bit better. That little feeder slope's nice. That little feeder slope will work well to here. Yeah, more the T-shot on this one. Miss Low again. Five under. Hmm, okay. Have some issues with blind OB like on the far side and okay I, re I do remember this hole so the OB being where it is is entirely because that's where you put the fairway again similar to three like we want to think about the OB as why is this little bit cut in that's odd um you want your OB as a perimeter hazard rather than, I, I don't, these trees, if I ended up underneath them, would be punitive enough. We don't need to put OB there as well. And just, this hole's fighting the land just a little bit. There's not, if, if you were rooting this course, this is not a par four you would put in because it's just awkward and kind of, Kind of gimmicky in the sense that we're hitting over the bunker, but we're really saying don't run out of bounds this way. It does work from an angle point of view. You can get the angle by challenging the out of bounds. I just think we've got to be so careful with OB and how we use it because, yeah, this feels, this is a video game golf hole. In... And previously, I think they've been really nice open fairways. I think the, the best holes on this course haven't used the out of bounds. So we'll just take a little bit off the driver and just hit to the brow of the hill. So I think, frankly, this hole's better without the out-bounds. Like, if you play to the brow of the hill, then you get that look down over the green. 
like the elevation and the way the fairway falls and tumbles with where the green sits i really like the thing i dislike is the out of bounds and how tight it is and again like we look at our landing area there i get that that's there for visual but i don't think the bunker's really adding anything for visuals if you lost this bunker that's also a better tee shot yeah i think that's where i fall down on that um tough pin Is this hold as short as I thought it was? I thought it was a route. Really, no, 438. A little longer than I thought it was. There we go. Not sure how I feel about this mound. I think for this slope, what I'd probably do, if you're having the mound be here, have it kind of fall directly into the green rather than potentially landing here and having a putt down it. I think that slope, little slope could be neater. Otherwise, I think I've just possibly drawn the worst pin on the green because I like the rest of it. Yeah, the out of bounds is kind of, I think the thing that's getting me is it's really, the out of bounds is around your fairways, not where the out, but not the perimeter of the course. And that's what's kind of working against it. I've missed that low, that's an awful part. Didn't read it. I mean, still enjoying the course though. This green sits really nicely. This is the best par three by a mile. Just love this. This is a lovely little sand belt sighted green. Really like the little tree. No reason, just do. Um, base of a hill, these trees frame really nicely. Small target, which makes sense for the shot. That's par three on the course by a long way, and it looks uphill even when it isn't. We like this one. That's an, and I've treated it to my worst possible swing. I'm just going to lay up in the fairway. <laughs> uh, um, oh, can we chip? Didn't really want to slow. Ah, oh, playing my worst golf, golf on my favourite hole. Yeah, I think this is the best hole on the course for me, actually. Just, I thought that sits perfectly. It's so really, if you compare that to the previous two holes where they've been kind of fighting the land a little bit, that one just fits perfectly. And it was just there. Um, and I'd wager, could be wrong, that one took you less time to build than a lot of the others because I think you just kind of found it. Uh, yeah, similar things, previous tee shots here. This, that's the play. We're going to get kicked down this side, but... There's some cool land movement here as well, actually. I really like that spine. I think, yeah. Because there's a little bit of subtlety here that you could miss. Actually, there's a lot here I really like. So, and it's because you've brought this. Oh, stop spinning around. This little false front is built out of a little swale that runs well off the green. And because of that, I now have a shot that's a little bit more awkward than it might be. And it doesn't really make a difference to anyone other than me. It probably doesn't impact how you're playing it because if I'm missing it here. That's a really bad pitch. But because I've driven it down the right rather than taking it further left. I've got less of a clear view of this pin. I've brought this little false front slightly more into play, and that's like the slight miss. I'm also on an awkwardish sort of lie where it's downhill, so I'm thinking about how far it's going. I've got that bunker behind rather than if I come this way, but much more latitude for error. Like, I think I criticised that tee shot a little too early. Down the left would have been better. Still think we're probably pinching a little too much. Maybe would like to see actually take the fairway a bit closer. But I really like the second shot that I've got. That would be one where I want to play that tee shot again. And there you go. Case in point. I also think this hole kind of fits the land it's on nicely. 
made sense. I'd have to play it on different pins because I think I drew a really good pin combat there. 18. Yeah, same thing with OB. We've also done this three times now where it's OB on the right of a hole. 3, 15, 18. This one is the perimeter of the course. But it's like, also, did this road need to go here? I guess it probably did. But you've got the road coming in the other way as well. Mm, yeah, it's not my favourite closing hole. Especially coming off two holes I really liked, 16 and 17. This is, I will say, this is the least of the three OB holes I've not liked as much. This is the one of them I'd like the most. Um, I'd probably allow a little bit more space this side just for people running slightly off the green to not be going OB. We've also then got low side here but the green is running hard this way. I think this one's fighting the land a little bit more in the way that the other two, the previous holes, haven't done quite so much. Cool look with the bunker staggering on this right hand on the left hand side even. Like the trees look good. Got the clubhouse in the back. There's a lot of elements of this hole that I do like. Just that OB is. It's OB is always going to be devices, divisive. And I mean, you're never going to pull it off perfectly. And I think in video games, people are always going to dislike OB because they're used to finding their ball at the bottom of a cliff or what have you. Um, so just be really careful with how you're using it. There's loads I liked there. Let's look at the scorecard. Um, back nine, it, it plays well. I, I've hit minus four. I've not played particularly well. I thought the greens weren't tricked up. They were nice, and actually they worked well. This would be the only thing I'd say that would keep this from being like a really good CC course was how driver was like the the 305 driver was like the automatic play on so many holes and therefore guys with shorter drivers who are more likely to be, going to be on CC that's where it's punishing them a little bit more there were some holes I really really liked I thought 16 is an awesome par 3 loved that Other than, and then I'd look at that and go well that was a lot of it was to do with setting but also green size what could we have done a little bit differently on the other par 3s which the three par 3s you have other than 16 they're all fine but they're all kind of similar um, secondly, with some of them, let's say 14, that par 5, could we be using that coastal area a little bit more as like a hazard? Um, and I think that's... Pro oh, and then the drivable pours were the other. Like, if let's make the biggest reward have the biggest risk rather than I felt the layout zones were a little too pinched. I had it's, uh, And I see this a lot with this kind of course that falls into that good to great sort of category. With a drivable four, we try to protect every option. Whereas, like, let's protect driver the most, and then three would a little bit less, and then five would a little bit less. And often three would will be protected just as much as driver. Um, but yeah, hopefully that's helpful and useful. Really enjoyed it, actually. I think I enjoyed that a lot more than when I played it at the end of 2K21. So if you made any hole design changes, they they worked. Um, but yeah, and if you're if you see that and you think actually you might like feedback on that and your courses are typically tour worthy in this sort of level or like around this sort of level and drop me a message on twitter or in the comments below and we'll see what i can do um, like i say i'm not going to be playing every course under the sun i won't accept everything it has to be of a certain sort of level for it to fit this sort of series um and it's not going to be a can you tell me how to get my course to approved or tour worthy it's not really that but hopefully that was useful see you again soon